Recovery drives adaptation, a key factor that determines on how well you will do in high intensity sports such as CrossFit but also high rocks is how well your muscles can recover from short bursts of high energy power output. And with this I mean within the workout, for example doing 10 heavy deadlifts to hit the posterior chain, then 15 pull-ups to hit the shoulders and then again go back to the deadlifts hoping that your posterior chain is recovered from that previous set. To train this, most athletes are constantly training at super high intensities, doing those metcons within the intensity that is usually seen in competitions. In this video, I will explain some super interesting signs on why this always go hard approach might be not optimal. I will discuss a very important concept in training physiology called phosphocreatin recovery and how lower intensity exercise might improve this metric and performance overall. So if you are an athlete interested in training physiology and you want to use the biochemistry of exercise to improve your training efficiency, I think this video will be super interesting for you. All right, let's get into it. I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich, based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so, I studied and taught different aspects of exercise physiology. And now I want to bring some of that science back to you guys. All right, let's say you are walking into the gym, you look at your training plan, and it says four times 10 heavy back squat at 75, 80% of your one rep max. Obviously, to do those muscular contractions, you will need energy. And that energy is kind of converted from food, right? The carbohydrates, the proteins and the fats and so on towards mechanical energy or actual contraction of the muscles. And I think in different courses, for example, the CrossFit Level 1, we talk extensively on how different energy systems like glycolysis and so on convert chemical energy into mechanical energy or contractions. But there's one very interesting, let's say, energy system that is often overlooked, but very important, I think, in high intensity functional sports, and that is the phosphocreatine system. And we call this the most powerful system of all energy systems because it can convert energy very quickly when there is a quick need for energy, for example, during heavy load back squats, right? And how does it work? It uh, all starts with phosphocreatine, which is a high energy uh, compound that is stored within the muscles. You have a couple of hundred grams within the muscle of this phosphocreatine stored always. And when the muscles need quick energy, this phosphocreatine is broken down into creatine, all well known, and a phosphate group. And that together with free energy, is then converted or synthesized towards ATP. And ATP is, let's say, the energy currency that muscles need for muscular contractions. You have to think about it, ATP always have to be in homeostasis or at least at stable levels within the muscle. And all the energy systems that you have are basically used to convert chemical energy into that ATP, all right? And phosphocreatin is the most powerful of that. So how does it look if you do heavy back squats, for example, uh, eight reps until failure or 10 reps until failure, uh, you see that the phosphocreatine stores are depleting quickly to a certain point, to very low levels in, in some muscles, and then exponentially increase back when you stop with the exercise and then kind of leveling out, right? And it takes approximately one to two minutes to restore these phosphocreatine levels to uh, half of the previous value, to 50 or 60%. Uh, so that's a very, uh, very important uh, metric. So the faster you can recover those phosphocreatine stores, the better, let's say, you will be doing not only in sets back squats or sets deadlifts, that's one, but more specifically in metcons or where you do heavy load exercises repetitively over time. Right? So it's very important to be able to recover these phosphocreatine stores well in CrossFit, to a lesser extent, also uh, high rocks. But what determines this rebounding or this recovery of phosphocreatine stores? And that will be the ATP or the availability of ATP because a specific enzyme right, that breaks down phosphocreatine into creatine and this phosphate group called creatine kinase. And this heavily depends 
on how much ATP availability there is in the muscle. When ATP availability is low, obviously creatine kinase uh, activity will be high and vice versa. When ATP is high, when it's highly abundant, there will be no need to break down phosphocreatine, obviously. So the faster you can rebuild your ATP in the period after heavy load contractions, for example, as I said, 8 to 10 back squats uh, for load, the better or the faster the phosphocreatine restorage will be. And this is a key parameter. So to bring it back into the gym, if you think about different types of athletes, you have one kind of power lifter who's very naturally strong and very explosive by nature, he will have a lot of fast twitch fibers. And then you also have more an endurance type athlete, for example, a triathlete or someone who's coming from the endurance sport and comes into your gym, starts CrossFit, he will be more endurance type. And this will heavily this phenotype will heavily affect how fast the person can recover their phosphocreatine stores. As you can see here from uh, the graph, fast twitch fibers, they can decrease their phosphocreatine stores much faster and also it takes much longer, that's key here, to recover. While more slow twitch biased athletes, so endurance type athletes, will not be able to deplete their phosphocreatine stores fully, but also will recover much faster. And that's why I'm always pretty, let's say, frustrated uh, sometimes at least in uh, regular CrossFit classes where they do, for example, heavy back squats and they have 20 minutes to do this, right? And then they say, okay, now do four times 10, but you only have two minutes of rest in between. For some people, this will be absolutely sufficient, right? Like your endurance type athlete, they will be able to recover their phosphocreatine stores in two minutes, two and a half minutes and be fully uh, back again. But then you have more, let's say, explosive type athletes for example, like me, I'm definitely more a uh, strength biased uh, athlete or at least a person. I need a lot more time to recover from such exercise. And that's why I was never fully recovered when we only rested two minutes. So if you are a coach, maybe try to um, or provide more than enough rest or give different people more or less rest in your class. I think this could actually improve the training efficiency of your training. So back to the essence of this video, how can you manipulate the recovery of this phosphocreatine stores and how well you can recover within a workout or of uh, different back squats. And then we have to go back to uh, my previous video, which actually did get quite a lot of comments and uh, there was a lot of uh, fuss about it also on Instagram. I will link the Instagram post we did about the video uh, down below so you can also read the comments. And this video or, or this, this post was about the fact that if you would always do high intensity sprint interval training, so very high high intensity sports, your VO2 max doesn't increase to the same extent, at least over a long period of time, than when you would do lower intensity exercise training. And much of that has to do with the graph that you see popping up on the screen now, is that lower intensity exercise, like high intensity interval training, like four by four at threshold pace, or low intensity endurance training, like zone two or zone three for several minutes or at least uh, 30 to 40 minutes actually increases the amount of capillaries you have within each muscle fiber or uh, surrounding each muscle fiber. And this is very important on the long term to deliver oxygen towards the working muscle. So I was thinking, is this also important? Not only for VO2 max, because I, I, I do agree with some of the comments that VO2 max is not only fitness. It's not a, a competition of VO2 max, for example, CrossFit or even uh, Hyrox or other derivative. It is obviously many more aspects of fitness. I, I fully agree. But what is known from literature and what is known from decades of research is that lower intensity exercise does increase the delivery of oxygen more towards the muscle than, for example, always doing super hard uh, sprint interval training. And that is important also in the context of phosphocreatine restorage or replenishment, because I had to dig very deeply into the archives of the internet and uh, I found a very interesting paper that looked at the correlation between this recovery of phosphocreatine and the amount of capillaries the muscle has. 
So how did they do the study? They did plantar flexions. So this means a contraction of the, the gastrocnemius of the calf muscle. So imagine this is my foot and they did flexions at certain intensities, always increasing in intensities, 40%, 50% and 60% of maximal uh, voluntary contractions, as you can see here on the graph. And what is interesting is that they stopped the exercise when phosphocreatine stores were 33% depleted. So that's just a, a part of the protocol. So it was not fully to 0%, like for example, you would have with a 10 by 10 back squat. And this took approximately six minutes, right? So think about it as a pretty light to moderate uh, CrossFit workout. And indeed, as you see, they measured the phosphocreatine stores throughout that protocol. It kind of decreases slowly and then gets towards uh, 33% reduction as they wanted. And then they see a fast recovery. Important note here, every muscle or muscle group recovers uh, different. So you see here, in a couple seconds, like in 20, 30 seconds, they already are almost fully recovered here, right? While other muscles, for example, the thigh muscle, take much longer to recover these phosphocreatine stores. But that is just a side note. So the question here is, and also what I had was, is this recovery related to the amount of capillaries that are sitting within the muscle or uh, around the muscle fibers? Because they also took muscle biopsies from the calf and then measured the uh, amount of capillaries. And interestingly, at least to me, uh, was that there was a very clear correlation. You see here the, the on the left side to the y-axis how much time it took to fully recover, so 40 seconds towards uh, 10, 15 seconds. And then on the x-axis they see the amount of capillaries that are surrounding each fiber. And you see a very clear correlation between the two. So this strongly suggests that people who want to do well in functional fitness, right? Like not only pure strength, but rather recovery, improving their recovery, the phosphocreatine recovery within each workout, because you want to obviously recover well in round two, round three, round four. I think it's one of the, the most important determinants of uh, functional fitness, or at least high intensity functional fitness. Um, if you want to improve that, it makes sense to also have sufficient amount of capillaries within your muscle that can provide sufficient amount of oxygen to resynthesize this ATP that is necessary to um, recover the phosphocreatine stores, as I said in the beginning. So always when we, we put out these ideas uh, on, on, on Instagram or at least into the CrossFit communities, I get a lot of comments saying that, yeah, but CrossFit, uh, the, let's say the old school CrossFit programming uh, also included longer pieces into their workouts and they didn't always program heavy back squats and then always a metcon within the first session they took enough time for rest and so on i fully agree but two caveats to that first of all commercial crossfit gyms don't really or at least insuff insufficiently follow that programming. So for most people who are watching this video and are not uh, whatever world-class athletes and just follow the gym's programming, they do follow this uh, fast approach where you do strength and endurance in the same session and don't maybe have sufficient amount of time to recover from their strength exercises. That's one. And second, I mean, yes, sometimes a 5K very sporadically is uh, programmed at the, on, on the crossfit.com main site, I agree. But still, this is not the low intensity exercise that I'm alluding to here. I'm really talking about, let's say, zone two training, where you can go out with your friends uh, for a run and talk about all kinds of stuff without being out of breath. That is low intensity training, right? It's not at the threshold. It is longer. It is usually monostructural, not involving a lot of whatever uh, barbell work or, or, or anything that requires high burst of energy output, rather monostructural cyclical work. So if you are interested in also incorporating such training and on the long term, enhance your recovery from this fast, high power output uh, muscle contractions, enhance phosphocreatine recovery. We at World Science have several programs that incorporate some low intensity work into the weekly scheme. So I will put the link down uh, below where you can look at our season programming, our hybrid programming, but also our Running Clock 60, which is a new program that uh, incorporates much of the concepts that I always talk about in my video into structured 
programming and you will also uh, support the page along the way so if you're interested click the first link in description my question to to you to let's say the functional fitness audience is do you actually incorporate sometimes low intensity endurance work into your training comment down below i'm really interested to see all your experiences there and if it does actually improve your performance all right see you in the next one